Hi, I'm Lee at Iridium, and today I've got with me Mark Clower. How are you doing, mate? Hey, man, what's happening? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, we're, we're going to tackle something that's quite difficult, actually. So we're looking at debut albums and basically great debut albums. And, you know, this, this was quite... We're, we're talking about really fantastic ones because we can... There's lots of debut albums that are okay in there, yeah. you know. But... Um, these are actually ones that were just under, yeah, you know, ten out of ten, as if you like. They are yeah, our favourite sort of albums. And remember, everyone, this is um, not the most sales or anything like that. It's what made an impact on me and Mark. So we both made a list up. We don't know each other's list. Um, we've got quite a few to get through, but you know, it's exciting. We're probably gonna. I reckon we will match up a few, and obviously, if we do. You know, we're just, uh, we mentioned at the time whether we've got that one as well and we're past that one, if that was one of our one of our choices, if that's all right, mate. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, the way I'm going to do mine, this, this by the way, uh, everyone watching, this isn't um, like our least favourite to our favourite. They're not in any sort of order. I, I was sort of looking them up in the years, like going, like, first of all, I went right back and I started looking like that. But as I was remembering albums i just put them down beforehand so uh, you know they're, they're sort of not in any sort of order but i'm going to choose just let you know mark i'm going to choose one from the top and then one from the bottom and then meet in the middle uh, it's not as exciting as your the way you do your picks sometimes you know but <laughs> <laughs> are you ready to go first mate yeah i'm ready okay great debut albums you're number one mate well i thought long and hard about this um uh, there's like you say, there's so many great debuts, but I swear the one I have got to put at the top is the debut album by Whitney Houston. Um, I don't know if you are familiar with this channel called Sleeve Saturday, but the guy on there did a video for Whitney Houston, and it made me realize how phenomenal she is. That first album is absolutely groundbreaking. Um, I celebrate her entire catalog, but that debut album is absolutely amazing. There's nothing I like better than to get liquored up and jump in a mosh pit while listening to Whitney here. Well, let's hope no one's turned off the, the uh, program off yet. You know, that, that was, uh, <laughs> I take it, you'd sleep Saturday. Isn't that the one with Darren O'Sullivan who comes on our yeah, channel? Yeah, I believe, I believe that's his name. Right, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I saw him put a video up of Whitney Houston the other day. Now I knew his um, when he came on here, his taste. You know, he sometimes pushed it a little bit, but that's fine. You know, he, most of the time he went rock. But I did see that Whitney Houston video the other day, and I, you know, all to their own, I suppose. But here's Darren, we love you, man. <laughs> yes, man. This is no alcohol, but this is. I've only got lemonade, but. Cheers, Darren. Thanks for that, mate. Whitney Houston, what a great one. Good choice. Good choice. Darren, we love you, but you can't put something up like that without us taking the piss out of it. <laughs> Brilliant. We had to know it was coming. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. At least we'll at least we done it behind his back and not to his face. It's better behind him. <laughs> okay then, mate. Do you want to go for your real one? Unless okay, that actually yeah, was guess, unless that was the real one. <laughs> I guess I'll get serious here now. Um, okay. Um I'm going to get a couple of obvious ones out of the way here right off the bat. Mm. Uh, I've got to go with the debut Black Sabbath album. Yeah. And I hate to sound like a broken record because we talked about that recently in another video. But to me, that album is the birth of heavy metal. Um, it just paved the way for everything we're getting ready to talk about. Um, that day, Tony Iommi cut off the tips of his fingers in that metal shop <laughs> that altered the course of music forever um and that album just you know again it just stands head and shoulders above everything else to me because it is the birth of what we know and um uh, it's not my favorite sabbath album as a whole but you know i've gotta i've gotta throw it out there that's cool i mean i knew you was i definitely knew you was gonna add that you're obviously a massive sabbath fan there if not your favourite, very near the top. Um, I was I'm glad you said that you like the other albums better, actually, because I was going to say, 
if we just say at the end, if this don't put you in the deep uh, deep end too much, because sometimes these albums we're choosing, which are great, obviously, because they're the great debuts. I'm just interested to know whether you think they are the best album by the band as well, because you know some bands they come and go as quick as anything, and they bring a that's the best album they do is their first one. So I'm interested right. just to know whether you think that's the, your you know their best their best album in your opinion, obviously. Right. Right. Okay. Thanks for that, mate. Good choice. Uh, first choice, I'm, and we obviously we're going to tell each other if we've chosen the same one. I didn't actually choose that. I think out of the back of my head, I, well, you know about me and Sabbath, but yeah. I, knew, I knew you was going to have that one as well anyway. So my first one is Van Halen's debut, self-titled debut. So 1978, just done so much, just not like Sabbath in a way. Metal was still right here, right there when it was already here. But I think they did so much on top of what was already there. Um, late 70s. And I think they paved the way as well. What was to come in the 80s? Right. You, know, you just think if Van Halen didn't make the album, you know, I don't know. Would it have been the same in them 80s? I'm not, I'm not sure. But um, Eddie Van Halen obviously passed away last year. Um, influenced so many and the album has influenced so many as well so that's my first choice mate Van Halen one yeah they were definitely pioneers in that style of hard rock uh, like you said I doubt we'd have had you know the, the guitar shredders that we know now that probably would never have yeah started playing in that style had it not been Freddie Van Halen in that first that first album I mean you know, let's be honest they Again, they they kind of took the the genre to a different yeah in a different direction, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But they created a whole new form or style of what we know as heavy metal or hard rock. And uh, ironically, you probably know this, but they they toured with Sabbath in '78, I think it was. Yeah. Never Never Say Die tour. And people that saw that show even today. They talk about how tired Sabbath was mm. and how Van Halen essentially blew them off the stage. I, I have a hard time believing anybody could blow Black Sabbath off the stage. <laughs> I can see how, you know, they were young and hungry and, yeah. you know, trying to earn their spot in exactly. Sabbath. And, you know, they were on their last album with Ozzy, you know, at that time. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure that was quite an event to witness. The, the old guard kind of going out and the new guard kind of coming in and taking over. Definitely. As far as the best album is concerned, I mean, it might be a bit controversial this because certain albums Van Halen's play a massive part in my life through the 80s. Yeah. Especially what age I was and a lot of that depends. So that one, I can't really decide between that one and 1984 because, you know, I was 14 years old. That album was just amazing. And I actually went back because in 1978, I was only eight then. So I don't think I heard that album for a few years. So 1984 was one of the first Van Halen albums that came my way. So them two albums are very close. I can't really decide which one I would pick. I'd have to go through each track separately to really figure that one out. But um, yeah, I love that 1984 as well. So there you go, mate. Okay. All right, my second one again, I've got to get an obvious one out of the way. You know how big a Kiss fan I am. Mm. Uh, the Kiss debut album. Um, I was too young to buy this when it first came out. The first album I actually bought was Alive 2 and uh, then went back and bought all the stuff before. So I was, this album was already probably three or four years old when I first got it. Uh, and I was already a Kiss fan. So it's not like this album was my first exposure to Kiss, but it is one of the best because there's 10 tracks on this album and seven of them are Stone Cold Kiss classics that even today in the current mm -hmm. lineup, they still continue to play from time to time. And my all time favorite Kiss song is Black Diamond and it is on this album. So, uh, this album, even though I didn't hear it when it first came out, this album changed my life because this band changed my life. Yeah. Um, so I've got to, got to throw it in there at the top or for the top. Great one, man. Well, I knew I sort of had a feeling, you know. It's hard it? when someone's actually your, one of your favourite bands, you yeah. know. There are some favourite bands of mine that have brought out terrible debuts, but, you know, 
they're not obviously on this list, but um, okay. Well, I did say I was going to go top and then bottom, so I am, and it's a bit of a weird way this has worked out because this was a late comer to my list. I only thought of this yesterday, and I love this album, and I think it's got so much energy again. And this is when a, a singer or any sort of member of a band splits up from the band and they go and make a debut and they just kick ass on it because they just like, you know what I mean? They're sort of like, want to shove it in the other band's face, if you know what I mean. So Dave Lee Roth, eat him and smile. I, I just love it, man. And it, it's just with Steve I obviously on guitar and I, it just was such a huge album for me growing up again. And I just think it gave me everything I wanted from a Van Halen album, if you know what I mean. Now that they went with a 5150 album, which weren't bad, but I miss the old Van Halen, you know. <laughs> and um, I just, I just think that's a great album. And that is literally like Dave Lee Roth saying, you know what I mean? I'm gonna really kick ass on this album, and he did. He never matched it again. It's my, definitely Miles. Even the Skyscraper album was nothing compared to Eat and Smile. It's so much energy, and it really rocks out. Had a lot of sense of humour, as you know. As right. David Lee Roth does, but um, his vocals were great at the time. You know, what I mean, he never had the best, but it was quite strong for what it was. So, really fun videos, man. I mean, that Yankee Rose video with his arse hanging out was just ridiculous, <laughs> but <laughs> but funny, but really funny. I, but, can, um, I can't imagine Sammy Hagar doing that. Oh uh, no, no. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, I, I do joke a little bit about that 5150 when he tried his little bit of Davey Roth at the beginning of the album, you know, hello, baby. And I was just like, you know, I mean, stick to what you know. Don't try and emulate that sense of humor that Davey Roth had because it just won't work. Although he's got a brilliant voice, obviously. But anyway, that is the, my favorite album, Davey Roth, man. So that's it. Your turn. <clears throat> All right. Up next, I may be stealing one of yours, but. Uh, <laughs> Tesla, Mechanical Resonance. Um, absolutely love that album. Um, I think I told you I saw Def Leppard twice in 87. And Tesla opened the show on that tour. And I saw him here in Columbia and then up in Charlotte, North Carolina on that same tour. And uh, Tesla was a really hard act for even Def Leppard at their you know, what some would consider their peak mm -hmm. to follow it. Uh, I just absolutely love this album. They, nothing else in the Tesla catalog registers with me like this album does. So I would definitely say this is, I'm not going to say it's the best, but it's definitely my favorite of the Tesla albums. Um, to this day, I still listen oh. to it very regularly. Uh, oh. Modern Day Cowboy is just, still gives me shivers when I hear it. I remember the first time I heard it after school one day, a guy had brought the cassette to school and we listened to it in his car. And uh, I was hooked from that, from that point on. And that's one of them in it, every track. Every yeah. single track is just brilliant. Yeah. I did actually do a, a Tesla ranking and that came the top, but I, I actually, as because you know how I do my rankings, I'll, I'll tr rank every track and then I'll divide it by the amount of tracks. And then it but. I must admit the next two albums came close. You know, then first three albums for me were just amazing albums, but that first one still came top. I think it's because there's no weakness, no right. weakness whatsoever. Yeah, it was definitely on my list anyway, mate. <laughs> I I you, mate. On that, yeah. Okay. So I might not be going for everyone's favorite band who actually watched this channel, but I can't deny the greatness, greatness of this album, and that's the Pearl Jam debut 10. So I know it's a bit grungy, but it was a, that's such a strong album, man. And it's really rock and roll, really. I mean, they are in them early stages. They were very, I know that lyrically probably, you know, it was a bit depressing, but the actual music was rock and roll, you know, and on that album, especially, I think the guitar work was brilliant and then they could never match it again. You know, it was, it was lead guitar, which you didn't get in grunge a lot sometimes, did you? Sometimes in grunge, it was just all about rhythm guitar and just, yeah. you know, I'm talking Nirvana, you know, that, that sort of shit. But um, Pearl Jam 10, man, it's it's a great album. And that's, that's my only grunge <laughs> choice, <laughs> if you could call it grunge. But it's definitely their best 
they've never managed to match that, in my opinion. So, so I won't chastise you like Darren would if he was here, but uh, I, I was never a, a grunge fan. Uh, I was glad when that bad kind of <laughs> yeah. Came from it's really weird. I, I've I've got into those new sort of genres as I was growing up. And obviously I was still young. I was only like 20, just in my early 20s when it started coming around the grunge stuff. But, and even the new metal stuff, some of that I did get into, but it's funny, isn't it? Because now it doesn't really do, I don't listen to it at all. It doesn't, the only band I actually listen to out of all them from the, from the uh, 1990s, you know, all them sort of bands up to the new metal. The only bands I actually listen to are Alice in Chains. They're the only ones I listen to. Yeah. And a lot of people would say that's their metal. You know what I mean? So it's probably why I listen to them more than anything. So they're the only band that have stuck with me all them years. Yeah, I never I never really considered them grunge as far as Pearl Jam, Soundgarden mm. uh, kind of grunge. Mm. Uh, that facelift album, I mean, that was pretty metallic anyway you look yeah. at it. Yeah, definitely. I like I like a good bit of the early Allison things, Man in the Box, especially. Mm. I mean, that was that was pure metal. You know, that's, yeah. that's I agree. Metal. I agree. Yeah. Anyway, that's my grunge pick. <laughs> you know what? It, it's funny though, because a lot of that stuff you're talking about, you don't listen to a lot of that anymore. That that shows how strong classic metal really is. Yeah. Even some of this older stuff we're talking about still sounds, I don't want to say it sounds fresh, but it holds up very well. Yeah. Even in, you know, 2021, hmm. whereas a lot of the grunge and new metal stuff just, it just that does not hold up well. Well, you know what? I think uh, that new metal sound, though, is still around now, definitely. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. people try and suggest bands to me. And they've still got that new metal sound to me. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I'm thinking of bands like, you know, I've never got into them. And that's like Five Finger Death Punch. Right. You know, disturbed. I've never got into them because I, they have got to me, for me, that new metal type sound in them. Sure. And I, I just can't get into it. It's just, just me, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> everyone's going mad now because of people that have suggested the bands to me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway mate down to you okay uh, I'm going to go all the way back to the very first Lizzie Borden album Love You to Pieces uh, I love Lizzie Borden yeah they're, I do I do man I, they're not well known even now as long as they've been around they had a, you know, a little splash back in the late 80s when mm. Visual Eyes came out this album just is so I don't want to say crude, but it wasn't a very polished album like Visual Eyes was. But this this album was my first exposure to, to Lizzie Borden. And I just always loved them. They they were kind of a shock rock, you know, kind of band as far as the theatrics. But yeah. you know, they were they were very good musically as well. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I still Still love them to this day. Is that your favorite? Uh, it's not my favorite album, but there are some there are some yeah. songs on there that yeah. that I really do love. Yeah. Visual Lies is the one that done it for me. You already mentioned yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that. that's probably still my favorite. It was the most commercial by far. Oh, that's a brilliant. You know, they actually made it on the MTV, which is kind of shocking to think mm -hmm. back. That Lizzie Borden was actually played on the MTV, but yeah. You know, yeah. It's a great choice, man, though. It's, I love Lizzie Borden, man. A bit left field, that one's good. That's good, man. So, um, okay, I'm going probably for an obvious one here, and that's Dio, Holy Diver. You know, known as one of the great debuts of all time. <sighs> man, uh, the, everything about this album, me, he, he, yeah, again, this is a, just after a split up, isn't it? Yeah. You know, Black Sabbath. And he's gone and kicked ass with so much energy, so much. Vivian Campbell on this album is, yeah. I mean, you, you try and not many people can match Dio's voice, you know, and like be the highlight of an album. But he's right there with Dio on this. Um, right. Vivian Campbell, man, and well, everyone in the band. But I just wish there was a little bit more bass. That's the only thing on that album. 
You know, I mean, I love that Sabbath bass sound on that, on those two albums, on um, Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules. I just wish the bass was ramped up a tiny bit more, but that's just a, you know, maybe, maybe it wouldn't have had that energy if it did. Yeah. You know, it sometimes takes the energy away, doesn't it, if it's too bassy. But um, great album, man. I, I don't know what else you say about Holy Diver. It's just known as a classic, and I totally agree with that. I actually painted that on my bedroom wall, that. Yeah, I remember. Have you got any pictures of that? No, I'll tell you what, it's the biggest regret. You know, when you regret things, you think, I think I did take a picture, but don't know where it is. And it came out really well, actually. I was really, because I was, I was always all right at art, but that came out especially good for some reason. But um, mum and dad didn't like it much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's it, Matt. Picture of that. I'd like to see that. Yeah. You didn't have Holy Diver then? No, I, I kind of figured you were going to pick it. So yeah. I had to pick my, my obvious ones, but I, there were certain ones that mm. I'm pretty sure were going to be on your list. So. Yeah. Cool. All right, then, mate. Okay. Uh, next up, I'm going to go with the debut Blaze Bailey album, Silicon Messiah. Um, I know you're not a, <clears throat> not a big fan of his work in Maiden. Um, I actually like uh, the X Factor. Yeah, that one was better than the yeah, other one. I didn't yeah. care for the second one too much, but this album, he really came on to his own or came into his own. Um, I think a lot of these songs on this album kind of better suited his voice. Um, it's still kind of strange to think that they went from somebody like Bruce Dickinson sure. to Blaze Bailey. Yeah. And then when they switched singers, because they were so different. You know, a lot of bands, Queen's Right, for example, pick somebody that sounds almost exactly like the original. Yeah. It's like Maiden went in a totally different direction. Yeah. Uh, from that air raid siren to that deep baritone kind of voice. And, yeah. You know, unfortunately, his voice didn't work too well with a lot of the, mm. the Dickinson era stuff. But for stuff that was written for him, I think he was actually a a pretty good singer and uh this album actually when i first heard it you know i was like okay this is probably the material that blaze ought to be yeah. singing you know from the get-go because it's better suited to his style of voice and there's just some, some really good songs on that album uh, i've bought every solo album he's done and that debut is definitely my favorite of all his it's a bit weird that choice from Maiden, isn't it? Where they could have anyone in the world, you know, they they probably could have had Michael Keese get of Halloween. That would have been the but the closest yeah. thing they could have got to Dickinson. Yeah. But obviously they want to go a different direction. But you know the guy's gonna to have to sing it live and all, don't you? You know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> a bit of a weird one, but there you go. Great choice though, mate. Um and that goes amazingly meant into my next choice. So the Iron Maiden debut. Okay. So, love this. Obviously, new wave of British heavy metal was like around that, like foot in full force then. And um, man, I just love this. I mean, everyone, can, the, the first two Maiden albums, that this one and Killers. Everyone says Killers is like a classic more than Iron Maiden. I actually prefer Iron Maiden a lot better than I do the the second album. Yeah, um, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I haven't got a problem with the production either. I, I, I quite like it. It's nice and clear. And for 1980, you know, I mean, I know Steve Harris has got a problem with the production, said it's just not up to scratch. I quite like it. I actually really like the production. Um, and it's got some showings of what they were obviously going to become. I know it's a bit punky, but right. got Phantom of the Opera on there, ain't you? Yes. You know what I mean? And um, Strange World. Oh, man. Yeah, I love It's that. just some some brilliant tracks on that so I, that was a latecomer to mine I know for some reason I didn't spot it when I was going through my from year to year and then I thought, oh, Maiden man and that, that was a big part of me growing up Running Free was one of the first songs I think I ever heard yeah. you know to get into metal it's absolutely brilliant but that's my uh, that's my next choice mate so, your yep. turn I like that one a lot as well yeah. All right, um, this one I don't even know if you're familiar with. Um, Hill Devil Hill. Mm. You see with them at all? I've heard of them, yep. Yeah. Heard um, a few tracks, yeah. Vinny Apathy on drums, Rex Brown from Pantera on bass. Um, guitarist was a 
guy named Mark Zavon who evidently did some session work with Wasp and I think with Rat. Uh, very good guitarist. And uh, singer was a guy named Dewey Bragg. Um, very Sabbathy kind of. Dewey, yeah. Um, yeah. Actually saw him live when this album first came out. Put on a great show. Um, I just this album is head and shoulders, I think, above the second album. Because they've only done two, and I guess they're probably done now because Vinny, Vinny left and they brought in uh, John Kelly from uh, Typo Negative on drums. And now Rex, I'm pretty sure he's separated himself, so I don't know if they'll ever regroup and do anything else again, but that was a great, great debut album. Good one, man. Yeah, I remember hearing it. To tell you the truth, I might, I might start listening to that again because I remember liking it when it came out, but for some reason I didn't. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's, carry it's got on. Some, uh, a couple of songs are kind of commercial sounding, but uh, definitely got some of them have that doomy, savagey vibe. I think you, yeah. I think you'd like it if you delved a little deeper into it. Cool, it's a good one, mate. Well, my next one, I'm not sure if you have this. I don't know if we've had a conversation about this band, but this is known as a great debut and. Totally agree with that. And that's Rat out of the cellar. Yeah. Man, I mean, I know they had an EP out before. I wasn't actually too keen on that. The production was a bit yeah. crap. They brought Bo Hill in for this, I think. And he'd he done a few albums with them production-wise. Distinctive sound, man, they had Rat, didn't they? And that, yeah. even though the vocalist, you know, probably technically wasn't to compare him to some of those 80s vocalists. Do you know what I mean? He, you know, he couldn't reach them heights. But I love his voice, man. <laughs> Had a real sleazy sort of sound to it, yeah. distinct, distinctive. Um, it's not actually my favourite album. Forgot to say about that. Not my favourite album from them. I actually prefer Invasion of Your Privacy. Yeah. I love that album. Yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. But um, it's right behind it, without a doubt. You know, probably the second favourite album for me. But yeah, full up with hits, man. That one. Oh. Great album. Never. They never apparently made. That was their biggest album. They never, you know, made as much on any other album, but it's a great album. Yeah, round, round and round, you still hear mm. anytime you turn the radio on, you're still yeah. liable to hear that. And it's even recently appeared in a advert, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, guy, I think it's Geico insurance commercial. <laughs> if you've seen that one, but yeah, they're, that's definitely their trademark. So. Yeah, it's a great one, man. I love that album. Absolutely love it. Okay. Did you have that one? No, I did not. I did not. <laughs> okay. All Good right. Um, the debut album by Demons and Wizards. Um, unfortunately, like Ice Earth, Demons and Wizards is done now uh, because of the recent event. Involving John Schaefer, Hanzi, the singer, has officially pulled the plug on the Demons and Wizards project. So unfortunately, there won't be any more. They've done three albums so far, and that first album um, definitely have a, has a nice star vibe because of John Schaefer's just amazing rhythm guitar yeah. playing. Yeah. Um, that album's so atmospheric. And, uh, just absolutely love it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is well known as their, was, I've been reading some stuff about it as their best album, you know, yeah. compared to the others. But um, yeah. it's a shame, man. It's another band that's gone. But look, bands do, the amount of bands we, we both listen to that have gone for other reasons. Yeah. You know, I'm gutted about it all. But, you know, John Schaefer's the only original member anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. if, 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 it, say, you know, if he manages to, I don't know. Not serve any time. He might come back quite quickly with another band. You don't know, dear. Yeah. Uh, like, I, like I said before, it, it, if nothing else, he'll have a lot of uh, lyrical inspiration <laughs> if he does. He will. He will definitely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, mate. Well, I'm going for something very new. Can you guess what it is? Very new. Um, Black Swan. No, no, no. The um, the new Top the Torah album, Rejoicing okay. the Suffering. Okay. Man, it's, I mean, 
I can see it getting album of the year probably as well for me. Um, I'm not sure yet. Obviously, there's a long way to go. There's some rumours about some big albums coming out this year. But, um, I mean, the Michael Sweet and Tracy Guns album might that might be exactly. something special. You just don't know, you know. Uh, but man, this is just pure. It's like just where if if I want to listen to something heavy, it's just right there. You know, it's a bit thrashy. Yeah. But it's what I've always wanted Thrash to be. I miss Thrash with a good vocalist. Yeah. You know, and Todd Atour is just amazing, isn't he? Yeah. And and it, what he does, it, you can imagine a fresh singer singing over that, someone with extreme vocals, and it just, it, I, I don't know, it'd still be good musically, but I've never argued with that musically, fresh metal musically or extreme metal. I've never argued with the fact that the music's good. I just can't handle the cookie monster <laughs> vocals. No, yeah. yeah. So um, to hear someone with a voice like Todd the Tora sing over that fresh stuff, it's like yeah. a dream come true for me, man. And obviously he slows it down and does the sort of, Queen's Reiki or that sort of stuff on there as well. Man, it's near enough, for, you know, I, I've been trying to be a bit more conservative on my scoring lately, but I probably would have given that a 10 out of 10 probably a couple of years ago. But where I'm trying to be more picky, it didn't quite make it, but what an amazing album. It's just like, you know, when Striper bought out their last album, it's like... Um, He's fought the same lines along the same lines then for what? What am I going to do for everyone? I need to give everyone what they want on an album. It just seems like he's done whatever everyone would want out of that. Perfect album, mate, for me. So that's my definitely my newest one. The other ones are a lot older than that. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I haven't actually bought the album yet. I've heard I've heard your reviews of it. And it's definitely on my list that mm. I've got. <laughs> I've got a list of about 15 CDs that I'm getting ready to order here soon. That's definitely in there, but I, I don't have it yet. But I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm expecting it to be to be great. You won't be disappointed, mate. You won't be. Okay, you're next. All right. I don't know if this is cheating or not. Um, <laughs> it probably <laughs> is if you're saying that. <laughs> uh, the reason I say that, Michael Shanker Group was around before this. But this is the debut of the Macaulay Shanker Group. Um, so some people say I'm cheating because it's still MSG, but he changed the name to Macaulay Shanker Group from Michael Shanker Group. So I'm going to call it their debut album. Uh, Why not? Perfect timing. Uh, as I've mentioned before, Robin Macaulay is just, he's one of my favorite vocalists ever. And his voice is just as good now as it was in yeah. the 80s. Um, he just, I don't know, some, some guys just retain their voices better than others. And he's one of them. Um, uh, that album just chock full of hits and, uh, just, again, it's a great it. album, man. Oh, no, that's a, that's a new, that's a new, new ish one for me and all that album and that Macaulay Schenker period. I just yeah. started listening to all that, so um, perhaps it would have made my list as well, but I haven't had a long a long enough time with it, if you know what I mean. But, uh, yes, I mean, it got a lot more melodic, and that's my sort of thing. Yeah. You know? And I think the voice helps, doesn't it? It's funny you should say about the voice and how he's kept it. A lot of people say it's their lifestyle, but it ain't always the way, man. Look at Glenn Hughes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I mean, <laughs> so you can't say, I think you just sometimes, obviously that will help if you don't smoke. I suppose, but you know, in other ways, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not yeah, sure. I've actually got Glenn's autobiography that he put out a few years ago, and man, people talk about how much, how lucky Ozzy is to be alive, or mm. Keith Richards, or guys like that. You know, Glenn Hughes, he was he was just as screwed <laughs> up as the rest of them. I mean, he, man, he he's very lucky to be alive. Yeah. But maintain his voice the way he is. That's that's a that's a miracle. Definitely, mate. Definitely. Okay. My next one. Now, I, this is funny. This is so overplayed for me. So overplayed. This is. I don't think there's not a lot of songs I can listen to on this anymore, and that sounds bad because I'm choosing it. <laughs> but it, it was it is such a huge album, and I can see the greatness in it. 
and they never matched it at all. And in fact, they've had a disappointing studio discography for all these years. And that's Appetite for Destruction, Guns and Roses. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the weird thing about this album is that I got this, and I didn't get many albums when they first came out, but I got this the day it came out um, in 1987. Didn't usually have the money to do that, but this time I did, because I heard it, great things about it. I was bored by the time they got famous, because it was, it was a good year or so, even more than that, until they hit it big. And then everyone, it was everywhere. Yeah. You know, and I love this album. I absolutely love it. And I, I, it is probably the perfect rock and roll, heavy rock and roll album. But man, I, if I have to listen to Sweet Child of Mine or, or Welcome to the Jungle ever again. Yeah. But I've had to include it because it's so great, but it hasn't kept. I can listen. I've listened to other albums. This is the thing. I can listen to other albums as much as this now, and I'm fine with it. I don't know why. This must have been just so overplayed. Yeah, it was. That I, I just can't. I mean, if I if I had to listen to some songs on it, I'd probably go for the, you can call them deeper cuts, but they're all well known, like My Michelle, Rocket Queen and stuff like that. But, you know, Welcome to the Jungle and Sweet Child of Mine. Man, if I have to... <laughs> Paradise City. Paradise City. Oh. You know, I, I, I think I did, didn't do myself any favours and I was playing that for a year constantly. And then everyone was like, have you heard this band, Guns N' Roses? Oh, fuck, yes, I have. <laughs> fuck, I've been listening to them for the last year. But, um, yeah, but a great, you can't deny the greatness of the album. And it, it was so, they were the most dangerous band in the world, without a doubt, that, you know, no one knew what was going to go on when they played, if they turned up. <laughs> Yeah, I saw I saw them with Motley Crue. Uh, I guess it was '87. Uh, girls, girls, girls tour. Guns and Roses, No and I don't know if I'd ever even heard of them at that point until I saw them. But they were just so they were so different than the hair bands that were huge then because they didn't give a damn what they looked like. Yeah. I mean, they just came out and. Kind of like Tesla, you know, they just came out in street clothes and uh, did their thing. But man, they were just, they were on fire. And it, it was a hard act for Motley Crue to follow. I mean, I might be shot down in flames here and people will be kicking my ass for it because I know they're really well respected. But could that have been the, the sort of start of the grunge scene? You know what I mean? Heroin. Yeah. Because um, I don't know. The 80s scene, the glam scene, if you want to call it that, was all about coke, wasn't it, and, and women and beer. But Guns N' Roses were probably the first ones to bring the heroin sort of side into it. And, yeah. you know, I mean, that darker side, if you like. I'm not saying they were grunge. Yeah. But, I mean, it was probably the first step away from that 80s glam that we got, I reckon. They were a bit glammy as well, weren't they? When they first came out, Axel sometimes had his hair and yeah. hair sprayed up, but... That soon ended, but um, yeah, but they, look, were they were definitely pioneers in that sleeve rock, uh, yeah. You know, that, that probably led to growing, uh, you're probably right. I can't deny the brilliance of the album, but some of the, the singles off it, man, I just, honestly I can't listen to them anymore, yeah. It's mad, isn't it? Okay, then, mate. All right, next. I'm choosing a lot of um, I know they're very common, these, but I usually I'm a bit more left field, but. <laughs> I have, I've got some left field ones on here actually. I'm looking at them now, so that's good. 